Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we're gonna to be ranking my 10 favorite luxury makeup brands. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This week I'm doing all videos dedicated to luxury makeup brands and I thought I could rank my 10, like 10 favorite um, luxury brands and tell you a little bit more about it. I know for sure that I have makeup products by all 10 of these brands um, in my current makeup collections and I will also be talking a little bit about some brands that I don't own, that I've maybe never even tried. And let me know in a comment down below what some of your favorite luxury brands are. I would love to know. So let's get into the video. But before we do that, it may be good to know that I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and this greatly influences my makeup preferences. I've also been a makeup reviewer for more than a decade, which means I have some strong opinions. And if you're into eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice and getting the use out of your makeup, maybe you can cons consider subscribing because this channel may just have to offer something that you might be looking for. So I hope you'd like to join this no angel family and click that subscribe button down below. So yeah, I thought it could be fun to just chat about some luxury makeup. I don't often talk about luxury makeup brands all that often. Um, and when it comes to luxury makeup, I definitely tend to pick and choose. It's There's many channels out there that focus on reviewing nothing but um, uh, luxury makeup brands and I've tried some. I definitely haven't tried all of them. There are definitely a couple of brands that I've never tried that I wanted to discuss in this video and then rank 10 brands that I know are in my makeup collection and maybe there are more. Uh, some of you know my makeup collection even better than I do. But from the top of my head, I just made a list of 10 and I've ranked them from my least favorite to my favorite one. So some brands that I know I have never really shown on this channel because I've just never tried um, is a brand like Shiseido, which is pretty expensive. Um, I remember there being a little bit of hype around some of their like orchid blushes. This is very, very early makeup reviewing days. I believe it was like an 80 euro or dollar blush that some people really enjoyed. Um, and I remember there just being quite a lot of hype around that kind of product, but I've never really heard anybody else really raving about Shiseido products or Shiseido, I never know how to say it. Um, but this I think is, a, like, it, it is a brand that we can get over here, like it's available from most department stores, but it's just not one where I go and look at it and go like, this is something I need in my life. It's just one of those things where I've looked at it, but I've never ever really loved what, it, what they do. Um, so that's why this is one I've always skipped out on. Another brand I've always skipped is Cogendo or Cohendo. I don't know again how to pronounce this exactly, um, but they had his viral foundation a couple years ago. I believe Naked Tutorials really love this one. And I believe it's like a 70 euro or 80 euro foundation. I believe I can only ever get it online. I don't think the brand has ever become available here where I live. Maybe at more niche beauty shops that I haven't heard of, but this this foundation was so popular and I still see it, see it popping up from time to time. And sometimes I go like, I might like to try that someday, but I'm also good with what I have going on in my makeup collection right now. Then another one that I actually see featured quite a lot on a lot of makeup reviewing, like Instagrams and like um, makeup news announcements is Shantikai. And this is again a, uh, a brand that had a couple of products that like five, six years ago, several people in the beauty industry was, were really raving about. And this is another one of those brands where whenever I'm in the UK, I believe Space NK stocks them. So I've seen the brand in person and I've always just felt a bit of like, it's just so expensive for what it is. And I know that these brands very often claim like certain minerals or pigments or certain like high level ingredients. And I'm like, if I can get the res same results for less, do I really need it? And I actually feel that there are quite a lot of like more luxury brands that seem to look very closely at what K-Beauty is doing and then they just sell it for more on the Western market. That's how I feel about a lot of these products because if you want products that give that effect, check out K-Beauty because they do a lot, which is why next month we're doing a week of videos with K-Beauty. I'm not doing a video every day. It's just every video to go up this week is gonna be luxury makeup. And then next month we're gonna do one that's themed along the K-Beauty uh, stuff. 
And then the last brand I want to mention, and this may actually be a little bit of a shock because this brand was so hyped up for so long and it's the Tom Ford makeup line. And I remember everybody was going gaga for those eyeshadow quads, the lipsticks, but I think that over time, a lot of people have found that Tom Ford makeup is just really expensive for absolutely no reason because the lipsticks would expire really quickly. Um, like within six months, people would get like really weird smells and things like that. And also the eyeshadows apparently didn't last very long. At least that's what I've heard. Um, I'm not sure if you've tried Tom Ford, what your experience has been. Um, but this is one of those brands where the packaging looks really stunning. I think their fragrance line is really interesting as well. But this is another one of those brands where whenever I'm at a Sephora in France, I check them out. It's actually, the brand is for, is for sale here in Rotterdam where I live, but for some reason, I never go and check out the counter. Um, and this brand, it just, again, never appealed to me for how expensive it is and what it does. I'm like, I can get this effect with other products for sure. So that's why the ranking part of this video is going to focus on brands that I have tried. And as you can see, my opinions may have shifted a little bit over time. So number 10 in the luxury brand ranking is Chanel. So I use, I've said this before in the past, I, when I first started getting into makeup, I thought makeup had to be expensive for it to be good. This was like the late 2000s when I first started using makeup for real. And you know, it was the only makeup I had ever heard of was things that were pro was promoted in beauty magazines and they weren't exactly promoting drugstore makeup at the time. So it's really through blogging and the internet that I found that drugstore makeup can just be as good as more expensive things. And Chanel is definitely a brand that I used to own quite a few products from. Um, way back in the day. By now, I think the only Chanel product I still own is one of their tinted moisturizers, and it's actually one that's on the chopping block, as in I'm going to be using it up very soon, or I'm going to be uh, decluttering it next year if I haven't used it up by then, because it's just on its last legs, and that would mean that it's the final Chanel product that I'm going to be like letting go of. And I used to have so many things. I used to have some single shadows. I had eyeshadows. I tried their blushes, um, their eyeliners I used to use quite a bit. I've used a bunch of the Chanel mascara over time. Um, I think I had a powder at some point. Like I've tried bits and pieces from the line. Oh, lipsticks. Let's not forget about Chanel lipstick. I remember, oh, this is such a line, long time ago. I remember being in Germany on a trip with a friend and to practice my German, I went and bought a Chanel lipstick in German. I, I hung on to that lipstick for a long time just because of the experience. And at the time, that was like the holy grail of lipsticks for me. But by now, I've tried so many other things that I'm like, Chanel is just one of those brands that really doesn't excite me. They haven't really caught up on like getting enough shade ranges out there and really doing that. I feel that Chanel is very much stuck in the same thing they've been doing for a while, even though they have products that lots of beauty curators are like chatting about and there is some chatter when it comes to Chanel makeup for sure. Um, but we'll get to another brand in a minute that I also have ranked a little bit lower than it used to be, um, that I feel um, uses the same tactic as some of the other brands that I'm going to be talking about. So let me get to brand number nine first though. And that is YSL. And the reason why I'm ranking YSL quite low is just because I haven't tried a lot by them. The only thing I've really ever tried by YSL and that's only ever stood out to me from the entire lineup is their foundation. However, I see people talk about YSL makeup like it's like their bread and butter. And I'm like, the only thing that really interests me is their foundation. I love the old hours. I haven't tried the new one. I have the older one. Um, and it's one of the best like shade matches I have ever found in a foundation. And I also have the uh, Touche Cla. Uh, foundation as well. So YSL does some really, really stunning makeup products, but YSL is owned by L'Oreal. You can find a lot of YSL dupes in the L'Oreal line that I feel are sometimes as good as the L'Oreal. The shades may be slightly differently, um, but I know that L'Oreal for years had a Touche Cla dupe in their, uh, like their Lumi concealer. That was Touche Claw, but at a drugstore price point. So I feel that especially uh, YSL is a brand that's sort of been duped out of the market. And I actually have a couple of other brands coming up 
that um, I feel the same about. Brand number eight, similar reason here. I just haven't tried a lot from it, but what I've tried, I've loved, and that is Armani. So Armani Luminous Silk is my holy grail foundation. Um, that's a bold claim, but it, I just feel with my very fair skin tone, that drugstore foundation is just really, really difficult to get right. I did an entire ranking video earlier this year where I showed some uh, drugstore foundations again because I hadn't tried that many for a while. Um, and I was definitely focusing more so on like the higher end and luxury categories. And I just find that within the luxury lineup, I have very many more options to find something that matches this snow angel like skin, you could say. So Armani has been my best shade match. Uh, Luminous Silk is a great foundation that wears all day, that looks flawless. I'm seeing them extending this Luminous Silk line, which I'm down with. I love the Neo blushes. I love the Neo nude foundation. I have one of their liquid eyeshadows. And have I tried a lipstick? I don't remember whether I've tried their lipsticks or not, but Armani is a brand where I am interested in trying more um, because they do really good staple products. Like when I find an Armani product that I love, it instantly goes into my makeup collection for a long, long time. It's not something where I feel like I need to declutter this. There's a lot of thought that's behind these products. It's just that because I haven't tried enough to do, to do like a full face of Armani that I don't really feel I can say enough about it, but when it comes to Armani, I'm definitely like interested in trying a bit more in the future, but I believe they're now no longer in Douglas, which is a shame because they've been replaced by Gucci, which is another brand that should have been on the list, but I forgot to put them in. Let me then just chat about Gucci really quickly. So that makes that, that means we are getting to uh, ele uh, 11 brands, but this is not really in the ranking because from Gucci, I haven't tried anything but their lipsticks. So that's why I'm like, I don't feel I can consciously rank it here because I don't have a good enough feel for the entire Gucci lineup. Um, the lipsticks is the only thing that truly interested me when they launched. They have some really interesting shade ranges. They actually have four formulas and they have the, sh the, same, the same shade in every formula. So if you like a particular shade, you can get it in the different formulas, which I think is ingenious. However, the shades don't always line up. I have the shade Peggy Taupe, both in the Brillante and in the matte version. And in the matte, it's like a full on mauve. And in the uh, Brillante, uh, like very creamy, balmy texture, it's a lot more brown toned. So I don't feel the shades are a definite match, um, but they do that for a lot of their shades where you can find a similar shades to it so that you can also layer things, etc., etc. So love the Gucci lineup for their lipsticks. So this is like an honorable mention, you could say, but I don't necessarily love everything in their line. It's also very expensive and they don't really have anything else out that I love. Plus everything has a floral fragrance, which is not my favorite, especially not for complexion products. Number seven, let's get back, back to this ranking thing. So the Pat McGrath brand is one that I enjoy. We all know I have a couple of the products. I've got the blushes. I would love to try uh, the bronzer that came out this year. Um, and I have a bunch of the eyeshadow palettes. I have a couple of the motherships. I've got a couple of the quads. And I've tried other things from Pat McGrath that I just didn't like. So that's why this brand is link, uh, ranked more so towards the bottom of this ranking. Not because I don't like them, but a lot of the line seems quite repetitive. Not all of the products in the line are great for, for dry skin. I mean, their foundation and stuff, a lot of people rave about it, how much they love it. But I've never seen anybody raving about Pat McGrath that has super dry skin like I do. Um, so that's why the Pat McGrath brand is at the lower end of this ranking, just because the things I've tried have also been a little bit hit and miss for me, mainly because of color stories. It's incredibly warm toned and everything is pink and peach. Um, so that has to be your thing if you want to like Pat McGrath. Um, sure, the brand does some really unique things and those are the things I rate very highly in my makeup collection. Um, but I don't feel, again, I need to own everything this brand does. I just pick and choose, have a couple of things that I really like, and I stick to that. And I feel similarly about the next brand, which I wasn't sure whether I should feature them or not. But Hourglass is in place number six. Are they luxury? I feel they are. I feel they are a luxury brand. 
Um, they're perhaps not as luxury anymore as they used to be a couple years ago when they first launched. Um, but price point wise, I feel they definitely fit within the luxury category. And Hourglass is one that I just love for their powders, their blushes, um, and those like complexion products. But other, other things from Hourglass, I've just never tried. So I've never tried their foundations. Oh, I did have that stick foundation that they, the Ville primer I've tried. I've tried more from them than I think I did. Um, but those were just things that didn't stick with me. So I had it, I used it up or I decluttered it and I moved on with my life and I even forgot I had it. But the hourglass blushes and that hourglass highlighter that I have, I love to pieces. So hourglass is another one of those brands where I really pick and choose what I like. And that's what I stick to. Love the ambient lighting uh, uh, powder, but I have found a dupe in Kiko. In fact, I suspect that Kiko is made in the same factory as some of the luxury brands that I'm mentioning, including Hourglass, which is why there is a little bit of overlap between them as well. So Hourglass is another brand that you can definitely find dupes for. And this, this is where I think things get a little bit controversial because in place number five, is the internet's darling luxury makeup brand, and it's Charlotte Tilbury. Now there's so many people that love a good Charlotte Tilbury product. I love a couple of them as well, but I have done full face makeup looks using nothing but Charlotte Tilbury, and I've used so many products that have been hyped up into the high heavens over time, and for me, they aren't quite right, mainly because the brand is very warm toned. Everything has this rose gold undertone to match the packaging, it seems, but not everybody on the planet has a warm undertone. Case in point, myself. So that's why I feel that Charlotte Tilbury, while the products are lovely, they're good quality products, I don't find all of it necessarily worth the price point though. Um, and a lot of the products that I like are the ones that don't get hyped. So the Light Wonder Foundation, which I believe has been discontinued. That's my favorite base product from Charlotte Tilbury. So it's up to par with the Armani Luminous Silk for me. It's a very good lightweight everyday foundation that still lasts a really long time and yet it's still hydrating. I don't know how they did it. Plus that shade match is actually much better than any of the other base products I've tried from Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, bronzer wise, I'm currently wearing the uh, cream bronzer that was launched last year, which is actually really pretty on me. Much, much better than the powder bronzer. That shade was just a little bit weird on me. So I ended up decluttering it. Um, and Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows, I've decluttered most of those over time. Um, I've decluttered quite a bunch of the uh, blushes over time because like the powder blushes, because those weren't really a great match for me. I like the little uh, cream, like the, you know, the blush light gasm, orgasm, whatever they are called, those beauty light ones. That's the product name I was looking for. Those are really, really good products but everyone and their mother has been copying them. Um, you now have those e.l.f. ones, but even other brands that are more in the high-end category are now doing these liquid products with a puff. And the one thing I hate the most about those products isn't how they go on or how they wear, but it's the packaging, which I just find incredibly unhygienic. And I just, I, I just can't get down with the Charlotte Tilbury um, packaging very often, even though it looks really pretty. Like it looks stunning from an aesthetic point of view. Charlotte Tilbury is an amazing, amazing brand. I still have a couple of the lipsticks. The packaging is absolutely gorgeous. The rose gold, it goes so well. But here's another pet peeve when it comes to Charlotte Tilbury. And that's the fact that it's just a little too hyped up. And why is it hyped up? because the brand sends out a lot of PR to beauty curators. The reason why Charlotte Tilbury is one of the most talked about brands on the internet is because they create the buzz themselves. They just have an incredible marketing budget. They send everyone and their mother the products and everybody goes like, oh, look at how this, that's why. That's why, not because the products are anything special, but because there are so many people who are raving about it because they've been sent stuff for free. Um, and that's why I'm like, is this brand truly worth the hype? I think by now, 
No, um, because they, again, like Pat McGrath, are just repeating the same thing over and over. I haven't seen a truly innovative product from Charlotte Tilbury in a while. Um, so that's why I'm like, Charlotte Tilbury for me, I'm getting less and less interested with every single release they come out with. Brand number four, Natasha Denona. And here I have to say that I've tried a little bit more from Natasha Denona than from other brands. But again, I haven't tried anything like foundation or that new concealer I'm just not even interested in. So Natasha Denona is another one of those brands where I pick and choose. The eyeshadows that she does are amazing, but the color stories are a little bit bland. Like it's very mid-tier when it comes to the kind of shade selection you get in every palette. And I already knew that, but when I reorganized all of my Natasha Denona midi size palettes, that actually really, really showed up. When I pulled all of the shades out of four of the midi palettes, it just looked like one color once you laid it all out. Um, so there's not a lot of variety within the shades within Natasha Denona products, but I do feel the eyeshadow quality is superior to any of the other brands that I've ever tried. Natasha Denona does just does really amazing good eyeshadow quality, which is why it's rated so highly, because I tend to focus a lot of my reviews and a lot of my content on eyeshadow palettes, and Natasha Denona does just such a good eyeshadow palette formula that I'm like, I can't, I can't say no to it. I've tried a blush. I have a couple of the face products from uh, Natasha Denona as well. Tried a lip gloss, which I only didn't like because of this very strong, like sweet, like baked goods kind of scent that it had. Um, but I've loved everything so far that I've tried from the brand, which is why it's ranked a little bit higher than for instance, a Pat McGrath or a Charlotte Tilbury. Um, because so far, Natasha Denona, again, because it's expensive, I pick and choose what I like um, before investing my money into it. But so far, nothing I've bought from Natasha Denona, Denona has really been a letdown, if that makes sense. Number three, what is on my lips today? I know I mentioned Gucci as an honorable mention as I was thinking of the brand because it was too lipstick heavy and I haven't tried anything else from the brand. But that's why in the number three spot, I'm ranking Lisa Eldridge because if there is a brand that has single-handedly taken over my lipstick collection, it's the Lisa Eldridge lip lipstick line. Whether it's the True Velvets, the Insanely Saturated, or the Luxuriously Lucens, they are stunning. This brand was a bit of a one-trick pony at first, because we first just got the lip products and we just got a bunch of shades. I just posted a video last week where I show you all the luxuriously lucents and insanely saturateds that are out there at the minute. Um, but I have tried the foundation, which I love. I quite enjoy the highlighter, but it's not my favorite product. And also the lip glosses were a bit drying for me. I did a top five, bottom five um, in November last year with Lisa Eldridge. And there were a lot of people who thought I was hating on the brand. I'm not, I love the brand. Lisa Eldridge is one of my favorite luxury brands, but it, but it is expensive, but I love how Lisa Eldridge is really trying to do something different. I liked, I really, really enjoyed the eyeshadow palette that I tried, and I can't wait to see what this brand comes out with next. Not all of the releases are necessarily my cup of tea. Not all of the products necessarily go with my makeup preferences or makeup style, but there's so much thought into all of these different shades and how they wear and how they just pull really prettily on any skin tone you might have. It's ingenious. You can tell that Lisa Eldridge knows her makeup and I cannot wait for her to bring back her blush collection because that was released, but the packaging was a little bit faulty. So I believe they went back to the drawing board and now we're like, I'm still waiting patiently to try those blushes because those have been unavailable for like a year and a half. Um, and they keep saying like 2023, they're gonna be back. So fingers crossed that hopefully this summer we get to try some Lisa Eldridge blushes. Um, that's what I'm hoping for anyways, but so far I'm still loving all of those lipsticks. I'm wearing Love of My Life today because I felt it matched the pink in the shirt I was wearing and I'm wearing a very basic eye. So then something brighter on the lips is what I like to do. So Elisa Eldridge is definitely a brand that I am very much looking forward to what is coming out next. Um, brand number two is a brand that's like, it's been a solid favorite since the start of my makeup career. Like when I first got into makeup, Dior was the brand I went to. I loved their eyeshadows. I used their mascara. 
I've had a Dior foundation in my makeup collection for the past decade. So for a brand to be such a long standing favorite, and I love seeing how the brand after having a bit of a lull, like for a few years, people were hating on Dior. But then all of a sudden, people were talking about those Dior quintets again, like the eyeshadows. And then they kept doing product after product after product. And I think that what Dior has done very cleverly with their backstage line, is that they are really able to like dip their toes into the brand. And I think that way they really have found a completely new audience. So if it comes to a luxury brand that has been a longstanding favorite, I think I've tried, like I've tried Dior powder, I've tried Dior concealer, I've foundations, like several ones that I've used up in the past. Like it's, it's a love, it's, we've had a love fest going on for a while. That bronzer that they're doing currently, I just love, I'm, I think I can hit pan in that thing for a, in a while to come. I finally was able to try the rosy glow blush because it finally came in just the compact. They listen to customer feedback, even though it can take a while for them to, to get around to it, but they have so many great things in their makeup line that can just appeal to many people, whether you like something more natural, whether you like something more editorial, whether you like a little bit of color, they actually have a couple of really fun things. I used to have one of their cream shadows that they discontinued years ago, but those were really good too. Like Dior has been a staple in my collection that's never gone away, which is why it's in the number two spot. And finally, in the number one spot, the brand I am currently in love with the most is a brand I only started trying recently, but what used to be Charlotte Tilbury for me is now Victoria Beckham Beauty. Um, they did send me PR this year. I'm gonna be fully transparent, which was a great opportunity for me to be trying a lot out from the line. Um, they don't have a full makeup look yet. I don't think they have any complexion products yet in terms of like, foundations and concealer. The brand doesn't currently offer that, but what I've tried from them, I've loved. Even if at first I'm like, mm, I'm not sure I'm gonna love this. I put it in a shop my stash and the thing I wanna use is that Victoria Beckham product. A, the packaging is absolutely gorgeous. Two, the products are very intuitive in how you can use them. Eyeshadows that blend themselves, blushes that go on like a dream. It's been lovely, no weird fragrance, stunning colors. There's a little bit of everything in the lineup and I'm just really in love with it. I actually find myself browsing the website from time to time to think, hmm, I haven't tried that product yet, maybe I should. Um, so Victoria Beckham is definitely a brand where I'm like super interested to see and I hope they expand the range um, in the future so that we can enjoy a full face of Victoria Beckham makeup. That would be lovely. Like if they were to add like, um, you know, foundation, concealer and powder, then I could do a full face of <laughs> Victoria Beckham beauty makeup because I've got lipsticks, I've got one of their lip glosses, I've got the lip stain, I've loved them all, the cream blush. Um, the only product that's still kind of on my wish list now is that bronzer brick but because it comes with two shades, I kind of felt it wasn't really for me because I don't love it if it's two colors, but yeah, Victoria Beckham for sure. And if you want my recommendation for just one product you can try from Victoria Beckham, make it their Lit Lusters. I have another like three shades of the Lit Lusters on my wish list. Like it's, it's a thing, it's truly a thing. So yeah, that's why I wanted to rank this one really highly. Uh, not only because I was able to try some of the products for free, but because everything I've tried from them has been on point, no disappointments whatsoever. Really a brand that's bringing the A game and I hope that it can influence other um, luxury brands to hopefully go the same route. That would be lovely. So yeah, let me know in a comment down below what your favorite luxury makeup brand is. I would love to know. Thumbs up the vid video if you enjoyed it. Please stay tuned if you wanna see more by me. As I already mentioned this week, I'm gonna be talking a lot about luxury makeup. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a full face makeup look. We're gonna do a tea time chat and I'm gonna be showing you my favorite, best and worst luxury makeup products. So if you're looking for true, true product recommendations, then stay tuned, because that's coming later in the week. So I'd like to stay tuned for all of that goodness, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.